Hello, and welcome to Aquarium Online Academy. My name is Morgan, and today we're going to be learning all about birds. Now, birds, when I say birds, what do you think of? Maybe the first bird that pops into your mind is maybe a cardinal or a songbird, or maybe it is a penguin. Did you know that penguins are birds? Yes, penguins are birds. Now we have a really cool uh, penguin camera that we are checking out right now where we can see the penguins at our aquarium, the Aquarium of the Pacific here in Long Beach, which is where I'm at right now. Uh, in the studio, I have with me my friend Olivia. She will be controlling the media behind me. And if you have any questions, comments, or just want to talk to us, go ahead and text us our live questions to 562-286-1838. If you're watching this after the fact, you can go ahead and email us at live at lbaop.org. We love questions. So I have a question for you all. My question is, what makes a bird a bird? How do you know if an animal is a bird? Hmm. There are a few characteristics that separate birds from all other animals. So, I know one thing. Birds have feathers, right? Yes, birds have feathers. Even penguins have feathers. Feathers are an adaptation that birds have, usually to fly, or in the case of penguins, they're not going to be flying, but they're going to be diving. So these feathers are going to help birds by either keeping them buoyant in the water or buoyant in the air, being able to lift off the ground. What are some other characteristics of birds? Hmm. If we look closely at the penguins here, you can notice that they all have a very similar mouth. They have, ah, yes, like the, in this picture here, they have a beak for a mouth. Now that is a special adaptation that they have to go grab their prey. Their beak is much like a mouth, but they're not going to be able to chew their prey. They're just going to be able to grab their prey. So all birds, or most of all birds, have beaks. This is a great adaptation. Another characteristic that makes a bird a bird would be their wings. And maybe you're looking at the penguin and maybe you're like, well, wings, wings are used for flying. And you would be right. However, diving birds who may or may not fly also have wings. So you can see these penguins here, they have their wings sort of spread out. And in this case, they're using their wings for balance. They can also use their wings to help them swim underwater. But these birds have wings. Maybe they don't look like the traditional wing that has lots and lots of feathers on it, but these are wings and they do have feathers. So we know that birds have feathers. They have beaks. They have wings. What else is a characteristic that makes a bird a bird? Hmm. Do they give live birth like mammals? No, they don't give live birth. They lay eggs. Yeah, there's a great picture right here. So birds lay eggs. Here is a penguin that is just laid an egg. And what's really interesting about this egg is that this egg, it's a lot bigger than a chicken egg, right? So another thing that birds do is they incubate their eggs. They sit on their eggs to keep their eggs warm because birds are warm blooded. They're actually, their bodies need to be kept at a higher temperature than our bodies or other mammals' bodies. So even when they are in their eggs and they are just developing as little tiny babies, they are going to need to be kept warm. And now you can see um, under this light here, right here, this egg, 
you can sort of make out the the baby bird right so you can kind of see the shadows here and now what's going to happen with that little baby bird is it's going to grow and develop and grow and develop and it's going to use nutrients from the yolk sac that's within the egg and it's going to keep growing keep growing keep growing until suddenly it outgrows its egg right that's when they're going to crack out of their shell they are going to hatch and then you get something that looks like this this adorable little penguin chick now this penguin chick was hatched here at the aquarium of the pacific and what do you notice about this penguin chick so fluffy right this penguin chick looks a lot fluffier than the adults and it's not as dark right like the coloring is completely different this penguin chick is very light very fluffy there's not that characteristic white and black look that other Magellanic penguins have, like the penguin, like the adult penguins. Yes, exactly. The penguins, they look very, very different. And that is helpful because they are going to blend in with their environment. So since they're not going to be yet diving for their food, they're going to be waiting on land for their parents to bring them food. And now something that's kind of interesting that some penguins do is they will, the parents will go hunt for their food, they'll catch their fish, and they'll digest their fish, and then they will come back to their babies, and they will actually regurgitate or kind of throw up some of their digested food, and then that's what their babies are going to eat. <sighs> Wild, right? That is incredible. Just be glad you're not a baby penguin. <laughs> so that's how the babies will grow until they're grown up and they're adult size. And then they will take on that traditional, that standard coloring of that white and black, almost like the counter shading so that they can blend in with the ocean environment. Because that's where a lot of predators will live. So they need to have that protection from camouflage. So, ooh, uh, good question. The question was, do they molt? What does molt mean? Hmm, molt. To molt means to shed a layer of skin or a layer of feathers or to, to shed and to regrow. And yes, they do. Penguins go through a season called molting season. This is where they are going to be shedding their outer layer of skin and feathers and they're going to be uh, actually regrowing that outer layer. Now that's going to help them because that outer layer is going to get worn down by just the elements, by the wind, by going in the water, by the sun. So that is that outer layer is constantly taking on uh, a lot of environmental stress. So by regrowing that outer layer, it means that the birds will be protected, very well protected. Now, another adaptation that birds have that protect them is something that's called a nictating membrane. Now, nictating membrane, this is something that birds have that is actually another layer of protection for, especially for their eyes. So their eyes are very, very important. They use their eyes to help look for food, right? So they're, they use them to find their prey. And so they just have a special membrane that comes down over their eyes, almost like an eyelid, like a translucent, transparent eyelid that's going to protect their eyes, again, from any harmful elements in their environment. This nict nictating membrane is very, very important for them, especially when they're diving in the water and then coming onto land. They have to deal with those changes, the changes between the water and then, of course, the air so that their eyes don't dry out and so that their eyes are protected. They have that membrane. So we learned that we really just dove right into penguins because they are just some of the coolest birds and we have them here at the aquarium that we can look at. Um, 
So we talked about birds, right? What makes a bird a bird? We said feathers. So we said beaks. We said wings, laying eggs. We talked about a, a few different adaptations uh, that birds have. For example, their nictating membranes, for example, the ability to molt. Now, I want to show you over here in my dot camera actually what a feather looks like up close. And I want you guys to make observations. So please make some observations and text us your observations. So I want to show you some penguin feathers. Let me see if I can show you. They're actually very, very light. It almost feels like they're going to blow away. <laughs> Let me see if I can actually zoom in a little bit more here. So these penguin feathers are really, really interesting. They're very, very light. And they have a lot of these wispy parts here that are really close to where they attach to the body. So this end right here is where they attach to the body. And then this end right here is what is going to be closest to the environment. So what's very interesting about these penguin feathers is that they actually have the ability to store little air bubbles. So you can see there's a lot of space in between each uh, little wisp part here of the feather. And that's where the air can get stored. And now that those air bubbles are really helpful for keeping the penguin buoyant in the water. Of course, they want to dive down to be able to collect their prey, catch some fish, but then they need to be able to go back up to the surface because they breathe air. Birds breathe air. They don't have gills like fish. No, no, they breathe air. So this, this buoyancy strategy by collecting little air bubbles in between the little notches on the feather, that's gonna help them return to the surface that much faster and be able to get some air. Ooh. Why do penguins inside their mouth have sharp mouths? Great question. Let's see if we can take a look at uh, these serrations that penguins have inside of their mouths. Micah, thank you for your question. That is an excellent question. We're going to take a look at a picture to sort of illustrate what your question is so we can show everybody what you're talking about because that's a very, very smart question. Why do you think that something sharp in their mouth might be helpful for them? What do you think? Hmm. We have a sharp beak, right, on the outside and then on the inside kind of like right where right before their throat they have this really sharp serrations yes you can see it right here yes so they don't actually have teeth and since they don't have teeth they need something that's going to be able to squash and keep their prey right and remember penguins are going to be eating prey like fish and now fish have the ability to swim and something that penguins don't want the fish to do is to swim out of their beaks, right? So they're gonna go ahead and they're gonna capture the fish, put it in their mouth, and then this serration is going to clamp down and that's gonna make it so that the fish are not going to be able to swim back out of their mouths. So that fish, once it goes in, it's staying in. That's gonna be the penguin's food. It's not going to be able to come out. But you, ooh. What do they eat? What do penguins eat? Hmm. I think I already maybe sort of answered this, but depending on where they live, uh, some penguins live in really, really cold locations like Antarctica. Some penguins live in a little bit more temperate regions um, all the way up to the Galapagos. Ah, thank you. This is a great picture here. So we can see here that a lot of penguins their range is Antarctica. That is that uh, this mass down here. We also have penguins that live in, oops, sorry, covering it again, Australia, New Zealand, 
right here. We also have penguins that live around island communities. We have penguins that live um, at the bottom of Africa, so in South Africa. We also have penguins that live up the western coast of South America and then the Galapagos Islands right here. Now the Galapagos penguins are, they happen to live in very, very warm waters. And so depending on where these penguins are living, that would determine their food source, right? Because different fish live in different parts of the ocean depending on latitude um, so and depending on their adaptations. But in general, penguins are going to eat fish. That is just their delicious food. All right. So this is where you can find penguins. Penguins are in the southern hemisphere, right? So here we're in Long Beach. We are in the northern hemisphere in California. Uh, but the southern hemisphere is where penguins live. All right. Now, I think we have, well, we haven't really covered all about penguins. There's just a few more fun facts that I want to share with you all about penguins. Uh, out of the 18 species of penguins that we have here on planet Earth, there are only four, only four that actually live um, down here in really, really cold areas only four different species. And we actually have 14 different species that are gonna be living in temperate and warm waters. That was something that I didn't know. I thought most penguins live in the snow, but that is not true. I wonder if we can take a look at some of the Galapagos penguins and just look at their environment where they live. Oh yeah, this is great. Awesome. So what do you notice here about these penguins? So now what I notice about these penguins is that they're not very large. They have the traditional coloration of penguins. So they have that white belly and they have that black back. They have beaks, right? They have a little bit of white that sort of cascades from underneath their chin to above their eye. Um, they are living on rocks. So most penguins are going to be living and nesting on rocks or cliffs um, and then the, of course very very close to the ocean so that they can get their food now this ocean of course it's a little bit blurry but you can see that that bright turquoisey blue that beautiful color that indicates to me that this is a warm area so of course the galapagos is almost tropical so th they live in very very warm waters so that is very interesting to compare and contrast with some of the penguins that live in those Antarctic snowy regions. Oh, wow. We have some more questions coming in. Um, how do they communicate? Yeah, that is a great question. So they actually make noises. So I'm sure you've heard birds, right? Just birds in general making their sounds. Maybe you've heard songbirds, maybe you've heard a crow or a raven, sort of that caw sound. Um, maybe you've heard lorikeets, like we have here at the aquarium. They make a lot of noise, lots of squawking, lots of different pitch sounds. They are going to use sound to communicate with their flock members. So they mostly will communicate within the same species and they use sound to do that communication. Good question. And another question is, how do they sleep? Oh, so birds, just like uh, us mammals, they are going to sleep. They are not like uh, whales or dolphins where they shut off half of their brains and they can only rest half at a time. No, they're going to sleep just like us. Um, they will depending on the species of bird, maybe they will go to their nest to sleep. Maybe sometimes they'll sleep um, in a tree, but they're gonna, or maybe they're sleeping in a burrow, but they're gonna make sure that they are protected while they sleep because that is a vulnerable time for them. And that is a time where predators could theoretically come and get them 
or maybe safety in numbers like penguins. When penguins sleep, they sort of huddle all together, especially if they are on um, an iceberg or what have you. So, oh, another question is why do ours have tags? Yes, so Olivia, if we could just go to uh, some of the pictures of our penguins here at the aquarium or the video, you can see the tags. Um, so the question is, why do, why do ours have tags? And that is a really good question because that helps um, us here at the aquarium identify the different individuals. So we need to know each individual has their own special health conditions, has their own proclivities, the things that they like to do. Ah, here we have the underwater camera. Yes. Let's see if we can find one that has their tag. Um, so it helps our veterinary staff and our husbandry staff really identify the individual penguins because we do have a, a bunch of penguins and they do look quite a bit alike, although the husbandry staff is able to usually identify them by their different markings. Um, it is good to have them officially tagged so we know if a certain penguin needs medication, uh, we will be able to give that to them. Yes, here's a great picture. You can see right here, this penguin is tagged. It has a different color, um, and that color is going to indicate that is a different individual. So not only do we have their numbers, but also we have different colors indicating which penguin is which. Good question. Oh, another question is how do they play? Oh, that is a great question. So the penguins are actually one behavior that they really do a lot, which is not exactly playing, but they like to groom each other. Now this is gonna reinforce their bonds, much like playing would do. They will groom each other, they will take their beak and they will actually um, groom or move their beak around on another bird's fur, sorry, fur, <laughs> feathers, um, and sort of help them to take any uh, parasites or anything that they, that's not helpful for them, um, take them off. All right, so we have talked so much about penguins. Um, let's actually move on to puffins. Now, puffins are another, oh, here we have a great picture, another species of diving bird, but puffins are not found in the same area as penguins. Like we mentioned before, penguins are found in the Southern Hemisphere. Puffins are found in the Northern Hemisphere. Now these birds uh, are found in the North Pacific. These here are our um, puffins, our horn puffins. And we can tell that they're horn puffins because they have these little horns that are coming up here, right above their eyes. You can see that they have really interesting shaped beaks. They also have a great coloration on their beak. They have that, that yellow or that, that sandy color and then they have that bright red tip. They also have more pronounced feathers. So these feathers, you can see, as opposed to the penguin's feathers, they look much more like bird feathers. Now, one thing that puffins and penguins have in common is they both have denser bones. They have denser bones because they are gonna be diving for their prey, right? So they're gonna eat fish as well. A little bit smaller fish, Ah, oh, here's a great video of our exhibit that we have here at the Aquarium of the Pacific of the puffins. So they actually use their wings a lot to help them swim. So they're going to use their wings almost like birds would use their wings to flap and uh, gain altitude in the air. These puffins are going to use their wings underwater to be able to dive deeper, to be able to navigate go from one side to the other. So these puffins uh, also eat fish, yes, and they do have those denser bones. Now, they are similar in color to penguins as well. They have that lighter uh, color on their bellies. They have that darker color on their backs. And now that is going to help them blend in from predators. So 
if a predator is going to be looking down on that puffin, they're going to match with that deep, dark, colder ocean. That's going to help them uh, camouflage. And if a predator is looking upwards at that puffin, they're going to see that lighter color, which is going to blend in with that lighter sunlight from the surface waters. Another question that just came in, great question about puffins, is how big do they grow? Right? They look a lot smaller than penguins, right? And it's true. Some, they are smaller than most species of penguins, but they actually grow to be about two feet long, which is pretty big. Good questions. Oh, we... We have another question. I love all these questions. Thank you for asking. The question is, how fast do puffins swim? Hmm, that is a great question. So they're not super fast swimmers, but they can swim up to 10 miles per hour, which is probably as fast as you can run. <laughs> uh, so one, another bird actually, that dives is called a cormorant. Now these these birds have solid bones. They're also diving birds. Um, and these birds, however, are a lot faster swimmers. Yes, here's a great picture of them. Um, they're a lot faster than puffins. Um, they can swim, they can go 55 kilometers per hour. So that is that is pretty pretty quick. Um, and if you notice, they sort of, they have different body shapes than the puffins. You can see that they have a long, thin neck. They also have uh, like football shaped bodies. And so that's going to really help them be hydrodynamic or to be, to move fast through the water. They also eat fish, but even smaller fish than the puffins would eat. Uh, you can tell that because you can look at the shape and the size of their beak and you can determine that their prey is going to be smaller because they're not going to be able to open their beak very wide since it's not very large. Another adaptation that cormorants have on their beaks is they have a hook at the end of it, almost like a fishing hook. If you were to go fishing at the end of your fishing, you might have fishing line, you might have a hook. Well, the cormorants have that at the end of their beak. And that's something that they're going to use to actually hook fish. So they would hook the fish and then they would swallow the fish whole um, with their beak. They also have uh, webbed feet. So that's going to help them to swim in the water. And they, you can notice that they have a different coloring, absolutely different coloring than the puffins and the penguins. So they still sort of have a similar type of camouflage but they are also uh they're mostly found in temperate waters so it's not going to be as cold and dark um so they don't need as much black on their bodies Ooh, good question somebody asked are penguins endangered and uh the answer to that is yes especially penguins like like we have here emperor penguins that are going to be living in cold, uh, icy Antarctic lands. They're going to be endangered because uh, of climate change, unfortunately, because the amount of ice that we have is decreasing. The ice is melting and turning into water, and that is their habitat. So they need a lot of ice to keep them protected um, from their marine predators. So yes, they are endangered by way of climate change. Oh, great question. So we have another question. How many bones do penguins have? And the answer to that is 112. So fewer than fewer bones than us, uh, but still a bunch of bones. That's a great question. All right, friends, we are unfortunately out of time. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us here today and asking all of those great questions about birds. So again, we learned that what makes a bird a bird? We learned that all birds have certain characteristics. They have feathers, they have 
beaks, they have wings, they lay eggs, and uh, they are just really, really fascinating. One more really interesting fact before we go is that birds happen to be the closest living relatives of dinosaurs. So that is very interesting. I always thought that was very cool. But anyway, that is, that is it for today. Thank you for joining us. Again, you can email us questions at live at lbaop.org. Thank you for joining us. I'll see you next time. Bye.